Okay, uh, hello everyone. My name is Malo Vyas, and uh, today we are going to learn about ELF injection. Okay, what is ELF? ELF is a simple executable and linkable file format. Uh, it was primarily called extensible linking format on its early days. A standard file format for object files or uh, EXEs on Linux. So, what are the benefits of this? It can be uh, executed on different processors. It can work with different data encoding, or it can also work with different classes of machines. So, yeah. Uh, I'm a security analyst, proud volunteer for Nalemdabad. This is my Twitter, Malo underscore Vyasun. So, standard file format for executable files, object code, shared libraries, and code dumps. ELF object file. So, it's a file that contains compiled code, uh, which is known as object file. Object files can be one of the following, like relocatable object file, if you are uh, doing something compiling with uh, GCC. You might have known uh, encountered executable object file, which is a.out. Or if you are using libraries for your bigger projects, there will be uh, .a files for statically linked libraries and .so shared object files for dynamic linking. So we will get into that. So this is a simple object file format, ELF file format. It contains ELF header, program header table, and section table. So header table contains headers. So first of all, let's see what is the file layout of this. Yeah, don't worry if you don't understand every uh, single thing of this basic. So each ELF file is made up of one ELF header followed by file data. It should make sense. So it includes program header table. So it will include uh, or describe segments. Program header table will describe segments. Same way, section header table will de describe sections. Okay. So, what are segments? Segments are information or data which is required for runtime execution of ELF binary. So, same way, section uh, is information for linking and relocation. So, uh, this is done by linker after you have compiled your binary. So, can we make our program load our malicious binary? Like, see, uh, we can compile our, bin uh, our binary or libraries and make our program or binary to include our normal libraries, which are already linked with uh, our binary. Okay. So, is it possible to load our malicious binary library? Seems impossible, but uh, we can actually do that with normal variable environment variable yeah, which is uh, of ld preload let's see that uh, in practice Okay, so this is our simple target program, okay, which shows uh, process ID and then multiple hello worlds. Just simple thing. So, can we include our evil bind uh, library file with this? Let's first of all see what do we have here. Yeah. This is simple code for library, simple uh, C library. It has uh, P thread as header, standard library, uni std, standard input. Don't worry about this if you don't understand why are uh, there so many headers. 
we have defined sleep as 120 but i haven't used it so it doesn't matter uh malo can you zoom in a little yeah uh, just a second so is it uh, visible now clear yes man yeah so what is this function void callback we have defined the uh, pointer to very uh, function callback okay which also takes a pointer as argument this is constructor uh, it defines that whenever this library is loaded it will call this start callbacks function okay simple and after this uh, there are some sim uh, there are some if return statements so which will uh, which will check if uh, there are a thread which will just simple uh, simply create a thread p thread uh, create okay and it will call to this callback function you can see this in three uh, p thread create argument and what it does it will just continuously print hack the hack so uh, if we are successful with compiling our library as well as injecting into this elf what would happen it would happen that uh, we will see hack hack that this string multiple times so this is simple innocent binary which will okay so it just same both are same doesn't matter so we can do this but but first of all we need to compile this library okay so uh, there are multiple flags you don't need to worry about if you don't understand now most important one here is fpic flag you can see this it just compiles this library uh, c file it will leave with the name lib callback.so so there there is a naming convention for libraries uh, dynamically linked libraries in linux that it should uh, start with lib and end with dot so okay we have provided lp thread so to link that library to and a uh, dash shared flag for loading as a shared okay so it is compiled yeah we can see that lib callback dot so it is compiled so now <clears throat> what is this ld preload function so whenever a binary is executed it checks for uh, libraries on what it needs to do before execution starts so you can uh, do initialization stuff and everything there is a header called ld preload it takes from the environment variable so it, uh, it is something of law of execution so uh, it will check the path provided in the environment variable of ld preload if there is a library present uh, in this variable it would first execute that library and then our binary so let's do this yeah. it was successful why we are doing this the main benefit we can get from this elf injection is that uh, we can do persistence so if you have compromised the system and you want to uh, set your foot for a long time you can inject into some process uh, which no one interrupts like ssh service so no one is going to disable ssh service in a uh, big server so if you inject your code into ssh you are sure that you would uh, ever lose the access but this process seems complicated and it might may or may not work like this. so what can we do uh, there is another thing we can do yeah, it worked 
so uh, there is something called p trace it is vaguely documented in linux documentation so uh, we don't have complete documentation of uh, this p trace but still whatever we know about p trace uh, it helps a lot with development as well as malicious activities with the uh, linux program so uh, p trace in linux it, uh, linux lets users watch the kernel at work with a little help from p trace a tool that both debuggers and malicious process kidnappers use so uh, i guess every one of you has uh, may or may not have worked with debuggers like gdb hydra or whatever so uh, on its core it uses p trace most of them do to stop or pause the process and analyze the uh, registers or whatever we have at end so this is the chart of what actually happens here okay so generally a parent process fox child process simple as that parent process executes or creates child process child process uh, makes a system call of p trace trace me it tells the kernel to trace okay and parent process uh, waits for child to complete execution and after that parent uh, traces the system call and child executes a process okay so it sounds little complicated okay so uh, consider this generally generally uh, in a user land and kernel land whenever a system call is made system call is something like if you want a print command to be executed okay you tell the kernel that i want to execute this command print it so uh, you are doing every development your coding compilation everything in user land but whenever a system call is encountered it goes to the kernel kernel determines where to execute this uh, this particular system call and execute that so kernel monitors the process that uh, if it notices that p trace is monitoring the process it jumps to another function trace this okay trace this kernel function has simple to to logic it will stop the process and notify the parent process of that syscall or it will stop again after completing the syscall and notifies the parent process of reverse it doesn't make sense so okay over here so uh consider this a, ch uh, a child is learning a uh, learning to write okay parent is monitoring their child of how to write a 5 year old or a 6 year old children is learning to write or read something like that so parent is monitoring their child executing some process your process is writing reading or painting or whatever so child is being monitored by parent okay same way in this system uh, parent process monitors child and whenever kernel gets a trace uh, me syscall and it determines that a uh, process is should be monitored it will notify the parent of syscall like if i'm uh, making a syscall of print app or clear screen kernel will notify parent that uh, yeah your child is making this syscall okay like uh, if your child is going to buy some biscuits cookies or something like that shop will notify your parent that your, your child came and uh, tried to buy this cookie and after your process is complete kernel will notify parent about results what happened how it go uh, how it went so this is the underlying concept of debuggers so how will it uh, determine that under uh, the process is under monitoring or not okay so whenever a syscall is made kernel determines arguments argument you pass to a function from register which is ex okay ex will contain the value of which syscall to make this uh, whenever a program is or uh, program is under monitoring the kernel sets ex register value to this enos sys enos 
what is that this uh, flex is that kernel doesn't know what cisco is providing kernel actually knows that where is printf and everything but it says in osis to uh, deduce that this is under uh, under uh, uh, sorry monitoring so it will do stuff like uh, what we discussed earlier okay and so uh, we still need the original value of ex to make the sys call so that's why original value of ex is same in this one ex okay everything is complicated you don't have to understand everything so we can just see the demo and uh, see how it works okay This is a simple manual, Linux programmer manual. You can use with man command, and this is the manual for uh, p trace. Okay. The p trace. Uh, look at the description. The p trace system call provides a means by which one process may observe or control the execution of another process. Okay, and it can examine as well as change uh, traces, memory, and register. so you can com completely take over the control of any process with this simple trace uh, p trace which is legally provided with linux or operating system so okay so uh normal libraries strings and standard input initially okay after that we have a uh, normal system by uh, system libraries we want for this so sys ptrace for obviously we want ptrace so we will include that types wait and uniaskd uh don't, don't worry about this user uh, reg okay so uh, this is important define shell code size equal to 32 we want process to execute something so we have provided it sh shell code no uh, i don't know if all of you uh, know about shell codes but it is something uh, which which can be directly injected into a program so if you compile a binary and you take a dump of that binary you can inject that whenever you want wherever you want and it will be executed uh, okay practical example for this would be so this is normal dump of the uh, binary and if you take this bits middle column it would be shell code we have just written that so there is a simple uh, simple program for executing a shell so i have just taken the shell code for that okay uh, this is the function of inject data but we will get to that okay so this is the main function it takes argument count arguments and uh, declares some variables uh, for sys call target dst we will get to that so if argument is not equal to 2 now uh, it will show error pretty standard and if it gets so we we provide a process id with this uh, program and it will start tracing so if we have provided it will start tracing uh, tracing this if it can attach uh, this is the uh, p trace command which makes attachment okay so p trace and we have provided argument p trace attach and target process process id don't worry about this null null so uh, it they are pretty standard uh, arguments 
for attaching okay and p trace uh, gives negative return value like minus 1 2 3 3 4 1 3 3 7 or whatever if it fails execution so if it is negative it will show error of attachment so if it doesn't so we have attached our process with p trace okay it will wait for the process get the registers same way of p trace attached uh, it is pretty evident what this uh, argument is doing p trace get regs of target okay so it is uh, getting the registers of the target process and stores in regs okay if it it can't uh, get the register it will show error and exit injecting shell codes at void regs rip what is this so uh, i don't know if you everyone know this there is important register called eip or rip eip for the little bit system this registers or uh, tell compiler or kernel in our case which instruction should be executed next so if we have a uh, if you have executed 77 line of instruction first rip will contain address of 78th line so it will tell which line should be executed next okay so we have stored uh, we have uh, we have fetched the registers from process and stored them into this variable we got the value of rip with ri uh, rex dot rip okay and we are trying to inject shell code at this okay and uh, it passes this all arguments like target which uh, process to inject shell code what do we want to inject rip where do we want to inject exactly at which location we want to inject and shell code size the length of what we want to inject okay so let's go to inject data function it just defines a uh, 32 bit variable so pretty standard don't worry if you don't understand uh, this the uh, pretty common with system uh, development system programming so src we have developed src variable uh, declare sorry and declare dst okay for i equal to 0 and uh, i less than length we have got the length from inject data okay inject data takes process id source destination and length here length is shell code length okay so while i is less than shell code length it will increment i by 4 and uh add s and d okay increment same again we are in, uh, we are executing pitless with if else so we, we can know if it works or not so for writing uh, writing on to the process there is simple argument of p trace to text so text it takes process id destination pointer to the source okay and if it less than 0 it will uh, show the error let's see if this works PID as argument, we can find PID from this as uh, target program has in source to show this process ID, or we can do the simple and get the process ID from here. Why is it not permitted? tracing process waiting for process getting the registers injecting shell code at this location setting instruction pointer to this location and run it okay so we got the shell over here 
uh, it is pretty undistinguishable, but yeah, we got the shell. And uh, you can inject whatever you want over here. Instead of the simple execute, you can develop your, generate your own shell code like this. This is simple GDB peta, lovely. Okay, yeah. So there is one catch of this, okay. Why, uh, why Petris is widely used? It is used in uh, more malware than the debugging processes. Okay, so uh, the simple thing is, if you are using a Ptrace, if you are using a Ptrace command in any program, you can't use a debugger with it. Okay, you can't debug, you can't set a point on Ptrace command. So that's why uh, modern malware use Ptrace or techniques like this to make them un uh, anti debuggable. So you can't analyze those malware. So yeah, this was the reason why you can generate your own shell code and inject that. Okay. So yeah. credits zero x zero zero sec and uh, yeah, this blog is pretty good for library injection and Linux magazine for basics. Thank you. Any questions? Hello? Hello? Any questions? the difference between debugger and disassembler okay so uh, disassembler shows you simple uh, code of how your program was made okay and uh, debugger uh, shahid code is uh, asking that what is the difference between debugger and uh, disassembler yeah i'm saying the exactly just thing so uh, Modern debuggers like this uh, Ghidra includes both debugger and as well as this disassembler. Uh, I don't know why my GDB is not working right now. Otherwise, I will show you. This as main is a simple command for GDB to disassemble main. Okay, you can provide whatever function you want to disassemble. So what it would do, uh, it would try to find instructions of how this command was made. Okay, how this binary or function was created. It will show in instructions, minomics or assembly code, of course, it is whatever you want it to, and everything would be written over here. So you can find that, yeah, this main function first puts RBP, then moves RBP, RSP, calls this PLD function, okay? So this is how this assembler works. So what is debugger? You can set a breakpoint at any location in a program. So if you set a breakpoint at this location, It would create a breakpoint at this location, okay? And uh, if you run the program, it will execute everything written before here. So it will execute everything till this this line. And when it comes to execute this line, it would stop execution, pause the execution, and you can analyze registers and everything. So yeah, this is the difference between debugger and disassembler. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, uh, we can control CPU resistors value with Ptrace. We have uh, controlled the value of EIP, RIP over here. You can 
change that change any of these stores with this. Okay. Let's say this. Here we have injected into RIP, okay, uh, which is CPU register. You can inject into any other register you want. You just change the value of your weakness. Does have functionality for that. Okay, any other question? <coughs> 